we, we just want to show you some of the other stuff, some of the other interesting things that our, our team has been engaged in, some of the other research that we're doing, and some of the other work that we do. So just very, very briefly, uh, one of the things that we've been focusing on over the last uh, few years is building a website called Future of Work Academy, the Future of Work Academy .com. And where this came from was two pieces of research we got our research teams engaged in. The first piece of research asked the question, what will talent look like in the 21st century or in the 2020s? If we look ahead to 2025, 2028, what will talent look like? We have the wonderful privilege of, of working with some amazing companies around the world. These are uh, a, a selection of our clients. And we were able to go to these companies and say to them, so what are you seeing? What, what are you expecting? What are you looking for already uh, in this? And they gave us answers about the types of people they were looking for, the types of people they thought they were going, uh, they were going to need. That was the first piece of research. The second piece of research said if we look ahead at the 2020s and we understand the theme of automation, the fourth industrial revolution is, is coming along, then what's going to happen when the robots come for our jobs? Now, of course, we realize this is completely the wrong picture because that's not what the robots look like. Okay? The robots are in your phones already. The, the robots are the algorithms, the chatbots, the software, the Siri's and Google Play's and Amazon Alexa's and so on. They're already here. In fact, we think it's a whole lot better to stop thinking about AI because artificial intelligence sounds like you need a supercomputer in your basement and rather start thinking of IA, intelligent assistance. That's what the 2020s is going to be about, IA, not AI. And it's all these different ways in which these machines will help us. But of course, when they do that, they're going to come for our jobs. And so we're going to see places like call centers completely empty. Not just because the DA isn't phoning you anymore, but because... <laughs> um, but because all of the stuff that call centers do now can be done by chatbots, can be done by these IA uh, assistants. But it isn't just low-level jobs, although not every call center is a low-level job, but it isn't just lower-skilled or lower-level jobs. The computers are coming for the professionals too. Lawyers, doctors, engineers, accountants, actuaries, vets, architects are all going to be replaced in the 2020s. Uh, just to, uh, some of you are looking at me a little bit skeptically about that. I mean, how many of you would be comfortable replacing your family doctor, your, your GP, with a machine? Okay. There are a few hands, but not everybody in the room. The rest of you, you still want to go to the family doctor. But why? <laughs> why are you going to that family doctor? That family doctor doesn't have the time to keep up with the research, doesn't know what's good. They're just sitting in an office and a whole lot of sick people keep coming every single day. International research tells us that your family doctor gets the diagnosis right 72% of the time. Wow. Okay? That's global research, global average. You know this. Because the last four times you've been to the doctor, at least once, the pills didn't work. <laughs> you had to go back again a week or two later, say, Doc, I'm still not well. And the doctor goes, mm, OK, try this thing. And the doctor's going, whoops, OK, try this thing. But of course, you pay every time. Here's a thought you shouldn't think because it's too scary. Your doctor has no financial incentive to make you well. We should change our <laughs> medical system where we pay our family doctors every month that we haven't been sick. No, think about the change that you would get in the service and engagement and proactivity of your family doctor if they only got paid if you had spent 30 days healthy. It's the simplest thing to, I think I need to send a note to Cyril. Um, now, if, if I told you that there was a computer, the computer's name is IBM Watson, this is the first computer that beat a grand chess master, Gary Kasparov. Okay? It was called Deep Blue back then. Um, this computer, for the last nine years, has been focusing on medical knowledge. It knows everything every doctor has ever known. It has been fed with every medical textbook, every medical database, and now it is being fed your medical records. Not with your name on it, don't freak out, it's not scary, but it just means that when 
you've gone to the doctor and there's a case history on you. They've taken the case history and they've started putting into Watson and seeing what Watson would do with the diagnosis and, and, and prescriptions. Now your doctor's getting a 72% average. What do you think Watson's getting? 99.2% accuracy. So why wouldn't we let <coughs> Dr. Watson um, <laughs> do this for us, right? Especially because IBM have made this for free so far, okay? Why wouldn't, if, you're, if your kids are a little bit snotty this morning, why wouldn't you just take out your phone and say, go, ah, there we go. We take a photograph and we upload it to Watson and Watson says, ooh, that looks a bit nasty in there. And then the prescription comes down and the Uber, the Uber pharmacy is already delivering it. Okay? It's all integrated. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't you want this, right? So can I ask you the, the, the question again? I, I asked the, the, the question, how many of you would not be unhappy giving up your family doctor? How many, of you, how many of you now would be more happy with the machine now that you've got more information? Exactly. Except, except when it isn't just a cough and a flu, when it's actually you've been feeling a little bit sick for a little while and they gave you the antibiotics and that didn't work and now your hair's falling out and you go back to the doctor and the blood tests come back and it's a little bit more than you expected. The last thing you want, right, is some um, dialogue box <laughs> that pops up. Yeah. <laughs> help, yeah, help. What help can the computer give you? The last thing you want is to find out you've got some incurable disease because the computer dialog box tells you. So you tell me now, what is the difference in the future between a good doctor and a great doctor? Is it medical knowledge? Seven years of, of medical training and understanding medical systems. Computer can do that better. The ability to diagnose your disease. No, the computer can do that better. In fact, I won't go to a doctor in the future that isn't using a computer. Imagine your doctor said, oh, this internet thing, it's not for me. You'd, you'd say, what? I'm going somewhere else. How do you even keep up to date? The difference in the future is not their medical ability, it's their bedside manner, their empathy, their connection. So let's just put this very, very clearly. The best doctors in the future will be nurses. Yeah, for those in the medical profession, a round of applause. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd much rather have a nurse than a doctor. Um, it's not a gender issue there. Nurses can be men and doctors can be women. It's got to do with what is being provided. By the way, we could have chosen examples from any other professions, and engineers, lawyers. We can give you the same examples of how the world is changing. So, we did this research, two pieces of research. And the bizarre thing is when the two research teams came together, we discovered they both had the same answer. What will the world look like when the computers are doing all, and there's three things computers do. They do routine, so the stuff that's over and over again. Month-end accounts, annual audits, uh, discovery processes in a legal environment. Everything, basically, that a conveyancer does. Um, buying and selling houses, almost everything the banks do. It's just routine. It's not a lot of thinking involved. Uh, in fact, in some parts of those professions, you are told not to think. Okay? <laughs> just follow the process. All of that, the machines will do. Secondly, all of the rubbish jobs we don't like doing. The, the month-end accounting stuff that you have to do, all the stuff that's coming off your bill now, the bank recon, all the, the rubbish stuff, the, my cell C contracts just come up, I have to renew it. Why do I have to phone them? Why isn't there just a button I click somewhere? The machines will do all of that stuff for us. So all the menial ugh, kind of jobs that we have to do. And then the third thing is all the physically repetitive work. Anything that's physically repetitive, move this to here, move this to here, move this to here. All of that, that will be done by proper robots. But what about everything else? And then when we looked at what people were saying, what does talent look like, we realized it was all the other things. What people almost by instinct are seeing is that there are eight skills, that eight sets of skills that computers 
do not have. And these are them, without explanation today. But of course, if you hire Bruce Lee or myself or any of our team to come and speak to your organization or your team uh, to work with you in a workshop, each of these, in fact, can be a workshop on their own. Um, they can be a workshop together. They can be a presentation in which we unpack what each of these areas are. So the question for you very, very simply then is, so what do you do? What you do is you develop those skills. What do you do is you build those skills into your team. What do you do in an L&D environment in, 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 in your world, world of work is you build those into your training programs. What do you do as a parent? You look for these things in your kids and you develop them there. And I suppose the most important message is don't try to compete with the machines. Try to be more human. That is the way to get through successfully in the 2020s. What does that mean? Well, it means developing that set of skills that I'm not going to talk about today. That's what we talk about when we talk about eight skills from the future. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you.